Hi guys, and welcome back to another edition of The Edward. I am your host, Eddie, and tonight I will be doing my recap, review, and predictions for the season finale of The Walking Dead. <laughs> but first, we have to do the review for the tonight's most current episode, 515 Try. Now, before I begin, I must warn you, as usual, this review and recap will be full of spoilers, minor and massive spoilers for tonight's episode. So you have been warned. So moving on. Wow, that was that was intense. I mean, it's like we saw something snap in Rick's mind and Sasha's mind. It's like, and the camera angle was so creepy too, like in the opening scene where Sasha is alone at night in the watchtower. And it's like the shadow is like covering most of her face, but we see a piece of her eye right here and her eye looks completely gray, like dark gray. And she's breathing heavily and she's looking through the, sco the scope, excuse me. And it's like, Jesus, what's going on in her mind right now? And throughout the whole episode... It's like she is going down this path of uh, no return, so to speak. And Rick, Rick is becoming, Rick is becoming something that is like it. You can't, like you can't keep it in the wild, and you can't keep it in civilized society. Because he does have a valid point. He wants to protect Jesse, the woman he kind of likes. Uh, from her abusive uh, alcoholic husband, who unfortunately is the only surgeon and doctor in Alexandria. And when he tells Deanna about this, uh, she knows. So that answers that question as to whether or not the people of Alexandria knew about Pete's abuse of his wife and children and if they were doing anything about it. But it seems like Deanna did know and she was just simply hoping it would get better. But obviously it hasn't. Rick's solution is... We have to kill him. There's no other choice. So it sounds like he is taking Carol's advice or he's seriously considering it. He's like, we got to kill him. There's no other alternative here. What are we going to do? Separate him? He won't agree to that. He won't like that. But Deanna is like, no. And Deanna is not in a great place right now. She just lost one of her sons, Aiden, from the previous episode when the supply run ended in a complete disaster thanks to the cowardly actions of Nicholas, the other Alexandria scout. Now... When she's watching the tapes that she uh, filmed when she interviewed both Glenn and Nicholas about the events that led to the disaster during the supply run in the last episode, Deanna said to Rick a couple episodes ago when the group first arrived to Alexandria, she, she said that she can read people very, very well. And she, she, she said, she jokingly said, but it was probably serious when she said if she wasn't become, going to become a congresswoman, she would have become a poker player because she can read people really well. If Deanna can read people as well as she claims to, she will be able to see through Nick's facade and lie when he tells his warped version of the story of how he was the one who tried to save Aiden and, uh, was trying to save everybody else instead of the other way around where Glenn tells the truthful story where Nicholas lies to cover his ass and says that it was Glenn's fault and the other Rick's group's fault uh, for getting Aiden and Noah killed. So, but I think Deanna will hopefully know better as to who's telling the truth, but it doesn't help that father Gabriel filled her head and with this suspicion and this notion that Rick's group is unstable dangerous and untrustworthy and will take this place if they feel it necessary. And unfortunately, Rick, when he went ape shit after wailing on Pete in the street in front of most of Alexandria and several of his group members, uh, kind of cemented that fact. You know, Rick publicly and loudly said, keep in mind, he's got a bloodied up, beaten face from pounding Pete and then vice versa. And he's pointing his gun at the crowd and it's like he's become a crazed lunatic and he's yelling about how this place is not gonna work this is not gonna work what you're doing and he's referring to Deanna he's talking to her he's like Deanna what you're doing this is not gonna work this place if you keep running things the way they're going now this place will eventually fall and people will die and I am not gonna let that happen so he's making it clear that you're he's saying to them to Deanna specifically he says if you're not going to run this place properly, then I will. 
Me and my people will take over and we will run this place properly. Unfortunately, it kind of goes along with what Father Gabriel told her in the previous episode about how Rick's group could take this place from them. Fortunately, Michonne is there just in time to shut him up with a nice uh, back of the head hit with her fist, I believe. Yeah, just a really hard hit. So she knew that her friend was just going, you know, off the charts and he was just ranting. And from what I, from what I could tell, this was probably a lot of pent up rage, fear, uncertainty, and downright anger at the whole situation of the world right now. You know, it didn't help that he was wrestling with these feelings for Jesse and that he was trying to think about the safety of his children and his group, fellow group members. And the fact that he's a cop again or the town constable, you know, it probably adds to the pressure he's already feeling. So I think this was just like, he was kind of like, he's kind of like a volcano who was, you know, settling, 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 and finally, he goes off. All he needed was one little trigger to set him off, and the fight with Pete is what really did it in for him. You know, all of his true feelings, his true emotions came to the surface. He doesn't believe that this place is being run properly, and the people don't know what the hell they're doing, and sooner or later, they're going to get themselves killed and the place destroyed. And he's making it very clear. He's like, I can run this place and my people and I can take care of ourselves and you people can't. So now uh, that's that with Rick. And then the only speak and um, besides him, the other person who's becoming incredibly unhinged is Sasha. She's become reckless, uh, fearless for uh, for a lack of a better term. And uh but she, it's making her take unnecessary risk. Like she, she actually went into the woods and was intentionally hunting walkers, hunting them like game. And what I could tell is that that was just a way to blow off steam. Not the best way to blow off steam. Great. You know what? It is great to have zombies around uh, to take your rage and anger and fear and hatred out on. But... You shouldn't really do it at the expense of your bullets because she was hunting them down and killing them fairly quickly and efficiently with her guns. And she was putting them down one by one. But I thought to myself, you really shouldn't waste your bullets like that because you would have needed those later for a much more serious threat or from an entire horde that was encircling you. But she didn't i don't feel like she had to go through all of that ammunition the way she did fortunately rosita and michonne had been tracking her from alexandria and found her in the woods and helped her dispatch the little small walker horde that she had come upon but uh she kind of lashed out at michonne again saying i don't need your help i don't need you i don't need anybody and then she stops herself realizing that she's starting to rant and rave very much like Rick did. But the thing is, Rick didn't stop himself. Michonne had to shut him up. But Sasha had enough sense to realize that she was just being a total unreasonable bitch for nothing to Rosita and Michonne. So it's like, it's it's hard to say, you know, what's really going on inside a character's mind because unfortunately we can't read their minds. But it's definitely becoming clear that Sasha and Rick are becoming very, very unhinged, especially Sasha. Rick, on the other hand, you know, you might say, well, Rick seems to be way worse off than she is. But Rick, I think, like I said earlier, this was, he's like a volcano that's been waiting to go off for so long. And all he needed was one little push. And sure enough, he went off into this, you know, into this hailstorm of rage, emotions, and all of this the you know all of this tension and resentment that he had been feeling finally came out poured out of him and it made him look like a raving lunatic and that does not help the fact that Deanna is now going to start get suspicious of him and his group moving on we had Aaron and Daryl uh, meanwhile who are out on a recruitment mission and they're just looking for any signs of people unfortunately they find a lot more than they bargain for they find mutilated bodies that have been hacked up, you know, body part by body part. And most noticeably, they have found numerous walkers with once again the letter W encarved into their foreheads. And not only do they find it on walkers, but they find it on a dead 
naked blonde woman who was tied to a tree and had her insides hanging out on the outside as if she had been tied to a tree and left for dead to be devoured alive by walkers, which it looked like she most certainly was. And when Daryl lifted up her head, uh, it revealed that once again, somebody had carved a W into her forehead. And of course, she opened her eyes and she was a walker, but Daryl put her out of her misery. So now... You know, Daryl and Aaron are looking at each other like, who the hell is doing this? Like, what kind of people, Aaron even has a line, it's like, what kind of uh, person or people could tie a woman to a tree and leave her to be eaten alive? And he and Rick kind of, he and Daryl, excuse me, kind of give each other a look like, hmm, hmm? You know, like, uh-oh, what? who's out here? So, obviously, we did not meet the wolves. That's what I'm calling them for now because of the graffiti found on the walls in Noah's hometown uh, back uh uh, earlier in the season and the fact that uh, W's aren't carved in the foreheads. So that might that might be their real name or it could be just a cover name for whatever they, they do call themselves if they even have a name. Some people are speculating that this is the TV adaptation of the Scavengers. The Scavengers is a group of nasty people who are found lurking in the outskirts of DC. You know, uh, I, th I believe their story is, is that they just lure and trap people and then just kill them and take whatever supplies and food and resources they have on them so who knows if that's the route they're going on if this is indeed the scavengers or maybe this is an entirely new group of hostile characters that we are definitely going to meet because you can definitely be assured that two things are going to happen in the season finale number one we're going to find out who the wolves are what their deal is and how long they've been following rick's group if at all or how long they've been watching alexandria number two we are finally going to see Morgan uh, reappear one last time in the season because he's only appeared in two episodes and he is so far behind on catching up to Rick's group. Or hopefully, uh, you know, his timing will be great and he'll show up in the outskirts of D.C. just in time to see some shit go down outside of or at Alexandria and show his pretty face. So he is definitely going to appear. That is a fact, even though uh, they won't say or confirm that. I, th I think it's pretty certain he's definitely going to appear along with the wolves and we'll see who they are and what they're all about, what their deal is. And that's going to be the big, big season finale that everybody's been talking about for the past couple weeks but anyway moving on uh so and then so this was a great episode it was a very intense episode very very intense because we're seeing our characters becoming unhinged and unnerved by the by their surroundings and the ironic thing is is that their surroundings for once are peaceful genuine and and not too crazy or violent as long as they don't stay outside the walls for too long. But it's like Michonne, Sasha, and Rick all temporarily lost touch with reality and were unaware, completely unaware of their surroundings, especially Rick and Sasha. Michonne, she had a few flashbacks here and there, but she slowly came uh, back to reality. But Sasha and Rick became so unhinged at everything that was going on uh, with them. And, you know, it finally led to Rick's little uh, display of uh, ins almost, you know, borderline insanity in the street. Now, to be fair, the guy he was wailing on is an alcoholic, abusive asshole to his wife and kids. So I can't imagine, you know, and if Deanna knows about the secret abuse, I'm sure plenty of other Alexandria residents know as well. So... Maybe they won't feel too bad about Pete, but they will be scared by Rick's display of power and just how borderline insane he is. So it's it's very hard to tell as to what kind of uh, situation Rick's going to find himself in. 